every week, 1.4 million people are being added to cities and to urban contexts. This is in fact equivalent to the population of Stockholm. This is why cities are very important for us to address and to give particular attention. city or an urban context consists of buildings, the spaces between buildings, as well as infrastructure, namely traffic, transportation, water systems, and energy systems. The quality of the built environment directly affects the quality of life that people experience in the city or in the built environment. People live, work, study, and play in indoor spaces as well as outdoor spaces. So the quality of these spaces is very important so that people have an interesting experience in life. Having said that, we can identify three components in the built environment. Existing buildings, new buildings, as well as the space between buildings. Cities, to become more comfortable, comes with its challenges. Three of these challenges can be summarized as follows. First, in relation to existing buildings, so these buildings were constructed years and possibly decades ago. When they were constructed, they provided the necessary comfort for their inhabitants. Today, with global warming, with more urbanization, with taller buildings surrounding these existing buildings, the comfort levels are no more suitable or adequate for the inhabitants. The second challenge relates to new buildings. New buildings are still constructed with knowledge and processes that are conventional. This results in spaces that are not comfortable for people, whereby the inhabitants in these buildings need to use air conditioning to feel comfortable. This results in two main problems. The first is the fact that using air conditioning and energy will harm the environment in terms of air pollution. And second, this will result in increased costs of energy use. The third challenge pertains to the quality of the outdoor environment, whereby outdoor spaces become very hot, because of the incident solar radiation that is absorbed by the materials. So the materials absorb the heat and store it during the hot times of the day and the hot times of the year. And if there's not enough natural ventilation, the spaces become very uncomfortable and people in fact will not want to be there. There are challenges facing our aim to improve the quality of the built environment. This comes with numerous opportunities, the first of which relates to existing buildings, whereby we can retrofit existing buildings so that they provide more comfort for the people living inside. This can be done by measuring, testing, and analyzing building materials so that we can provide strategies that improve the performance of the building. For example, by looking at the building envelope and providing alternative strategies for thermal insulation, as well as studying the window glazing and providing more performant glass, we can provide indoor spaces that are comfortable whereby people do not rely on air conditioning systems so that they provide the sensation of comfort. The second opportunity relates to new buildings whereby architects and design teams using building science and the available technology can design buildings that respond to their environment. These buildings are harmonious with their context. They relate to the movement of the sun. They relate to the available natural ventilation and wind flow, and they benefit from the natural daylight. These parameters result in buildings that are integrated into their context and provide comfort for the inhabitants. Moreover, the construction activity results in the use of significant amounts of material. These materials usually come from natural resources. We cannot continue doing this because the natural materials on the planet are finite and limited. The third opportunity focuses on the outdoor spaces. With the proper identification and specification of materials uh, in terms of reflectivity, in terms of absorptance, with the proper integration of vegetation and trees in these outdoor spaces, we can create places where people want to go, want to walk, want to stroll, spend time in, and enjoy the quality of the outdoor environment.
entrepreneurs that want to focus and work on achieving our sustainable environment, I will leave you with three elements of advice. The first, again, will relate to existing buildings. It is so important to build the culture of maintenance. Let's maintain existing buildings. Let's prolong their life. These are valuable buildings that can serve people in a very positive way. So we need to work on improving the performance of these buildings so that they provide the necessary comfort while respecting the integrity of these buildings. In addition, I invite people to think and rethink about the materials that are used in the construction industry. We cannot keep on using natural materials from natural resources. We need to rethink about how we are sourcing these materials. Can we use more recyclable materials and more recycled materials? This will also improve the quality of the built environment and create buildings that are less impactful and less harmful to their context. Finally, in relation to the outdoor space, with the proper choice and specification of materials, as well as type, size, and condition of vegetation, outdoor spaces can become much more suitable for people's use. We should think of cities as organic, as organisms that change over time, over centuries and over millennia. And with the proper approach, we can optimize the performance of these cities and create sustainable environments.